We live in a time in which we've evolved over tens of thousands of years by learning from nature. That's why we are where we are. That's why we've achieved what we've achieved, because we've been able to learn, and we've been able to learn more rapidly than any other species, so we're more advanced. But the question is, can we learn at an accelerated pace? Because we have to. The financial crisis was a big wake-up call. Our achievements, which have taken so long, are at risk. Our interconnectedness, globalization, is creating new interdependencies. And it's these interdependencies and our wealth that now creates unintended consequences, spillover effects, cascading amplifier domino effects, which, if we don't manage them more effectively, can set us all back. Pandemics, financial crises, cyber attacks, climate change, these are unintended consequences of our evolution, of our success. But can we go back to nature and ask the question how these links work? This is an example of our failure to do it. This is the derivative trades in the financial markets in the lead up to the collapse of Lehman Brothers. And Lehman Brothers is the big ball at the bottom of this matrix. Everything was put in one basket. Too many resources were vested there. We didn't learn from nature. These are termite mounds on the savanna landscape in Africa. Nature's learned to do things differently. It doesn't put all its eggs in one basket. It diversifies. It builds critical mass, but no one place is too big to fail. Pandemics are going to be perhaps the defining feature of how our interconnectedness overwhelms us. And we see that increasingly, and we see it in the Ebola outbreak in West Africa. Can we create ways to stop fire breaks as well as ways to vaccinate, to stop it moving. And how do we manage our interconnectedness without this becoming a vulnerability? We've modeled, as shown here, that airline traffic exactly replicated the spread of swine flu in 160 countries in six weeks, with the big super spreaders being the big airports. We used to be in a different relationship with nature, in harmony. And when we were poorer, and there were fewer of us, this worked. But now we've become so wealthy and we have technologies and industrial level exploitation, it no longer does. That's why a tuna was auctioned for $1.8 million in Tokyo this year. This is why rhinoceros are becoming extinct and why the planet is becoming full. Governments also are not good. This is the Aral Sea. Six governments drawing water to feed their people doing the right thing, collectively a disaster. So do we have the collective wisdom as well as the individual freedoms? And it's not just what we do to nature, it's increasingly also what nature is doing to us. The risks that it's posing are getting greater, and it's poor people in poor places that are always most affected. So how can we learn from nature about how and where we settle? We need to ensure that the market alone does not drive decision making. But how do we get the prices right? And how do we get the markets right? Left to themselves, rhinoceros will become extinct with horns worth more than gold. Tuna will disappear and the atmosphere will be filled. But we used to be able to live in harmony. These iconic polar bears drifting away on melting ice should be a wake-up call to us. We need to recognize the ability of the system to fall apart and our fragility. There's many different dimensions we can learn from nature. It's a complex web. The food, energy, and other webs all interlink, and so do our lives. What you do affects me and vice versa in new ways that amplify because we are wealthier, because our choices affect each other. But do we recognize this? And how do we recognize in a way that natural species do? The threads between us are thin. We need to regard them with great care. If this falls apart, if we cascade and amplify our risks, all our achievements will be naught. Civilizations that we've fought to develop will be set back. So it's a fragile planet. It's a planet where we have the opportunities of the most wonderful future that we could ever imagine, free of poverty and disease. But it's also a possible disastrous future. So my question to all of you, which I'd like to discuss, is how can we learn from the way that natural systems do it 
to ensure we are able to manage our interdependencies and become more resilient. Thank you.